Hello and welcome back. This is Dawn. In today's video, I have a fun one. We're going to be doing not one but four different cards using the Bountiful Banners from Honeybee Stamps. Now this is a prefab design, which means the actual layout of the stamp and the design is all done for you, but I'm going to show you how to use it in different ways and make it your own. So again, I'm going to be using the Bountiful Banners stamp, the stencil, and the Bountiful Banners impression here. Now I will also be using the Bountiful Banners die, but I wasn't sure at the time, so these are the products that I pulled out. And since we're gonna be using this impression plate here, I thought I would try it with the Better Press cotton card panels. So the cotton card panels are meant for letter pressing. They're meant to receive impressions really well, so I thought, why not give it a shot? Now the problem with the cotton card panels is that when you're die cutting, they are, they're softer, right? Cardstock is heavier uh, pressed more tightly pressed. And these cotton card panels, this, my top plate has a lot of marks on it. It's really easy to transfer those marks to your cotton paper. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the universal platform here. I'm gonna review, I'm gonna remove that B plate and I'm gonna replace it with my glimmer shim. Now that is just a little bit thinner. So it's going to provide enough pressure to actually cut, but it's not gonna provide so much pressure that it forces that cotton panel up into my top plate and transferring and transfer any marks from my top plate. So this is really important for us in this project because we're going to be stenciling. And if we had any marks on our paper, any stray like indentations or cut marks, the ink would catch in those areas and you'd definitely be able to see them. So you can see here, it gave enough pressure to cut through this cotton panel but not so much that it forced that uh, paper up into the plate and I have a completely clean surface here to do my stenciling. Again, since I'm using the cotton card panels, I like to do the die cutting first and then the impression plate. So I'm just gonna line this up. I'm gonna tape it together and we're gonna use the uh, suggested sandwich here on our universal plate here, our universal, what is this called? Universal system? Uh, universal plate system and we're going to use the one for embossing which means I'm going to put down my A, my B, my plate, my paper, my E and then my D plate. So that's my sandwich for running this through and as I suspected this is going to give me a beautiful beautiful transfer of that impression. I did compare it next to cardstock and because this cotton is a little bit softer than your cardstock the impression you get is twice as deep. It's actually stunning. Look at that. You can see every little bit of that detail. And this is perfect for giving that blind letterpress look, which is letterpress without ink. But that got me thinking, I wonder if I can use the better press ink with this plate and get a um, an ink transfer letterpress. So I grabbed my Bark Better Press ink and I'm gonna ink this up similarly to how I would do a Better Press plate. I'm just going to be very mindful that this design is not quite as deeply etched as a Better Press plate. So it is easier to get the ink in the background there to transfer that ink to the areas you don't want to. So you wanna be light handed with this, but firm enough to actually get the ink on the plate. Uh, anywhere I got it where uh, I did not want, anywhere I got ink, I did not want it. I just used a soft cloth here and wiped it away. Okay, so now it's time to get this plate onto my paper. I want to be careful and I want it to stay in place. So I'm adding some washi tape to the edges here and creating uh, little tabs that I can fold over. I'm going to carefully pick up this plate and I'm going to gently and decisively drop it onto the panel. I don't want it to move around. I want it to stay in place, so I'm gonna hold it while I fold that washi tape over on either side, and this is gonna hold these two firmly together so that they don't shift or move around. I don't want that ink to smear. I'm gonna go ahead and put my plate, my little sandwich here, the same as an embossing sandwich, run this through, and you guys, it worked. Um, it's not as crisp and clean and clear as an impression plate by any means. I mean, a better press plate by any means, but it's definitely usable and it looks good, especially since we're gonna be ink blending over this. Now, the main reason that I don't think it's as perfect is because this is a smooth steel impression plate and the better press plates do have like a velvety suede texture to them. So they're meant to hold and receive that ink. But here you can see these results are 
they're usable, especially, like I said, we're since we're going to be stenciling over it anyway. So definitely take that chance and try different things with your supplies. You never know what will work. So I ended up making four of these panels. Two of them I inked and two of them I left as a blind letterpress. And now it's time to do our stenciling. The Bountiful Banners stencil has five layers and each of the leaves are broken into two separate layers. So you get two colors on each leaf, which is actually, it turns out to be really beautiful. It gives you this gorgeous pattern. I'm using distress inks and for this first two, I'm gonna use abandoned coral on my flowers and then I'm gonna just hit the edges here with a little bit of wild honey. For my first set of leaves, I'm gonna use crushed olive and mowed lawn. So for the first stencil, I'm gonna come through it with crushed olive and I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of mowed lawn to get a little blend there. And then for the second layer of those leaves, I'm going to do the exact same thing. This is just gonna give me a beautiful blend from a yellow green to a blue green. Now the second uh, type of leaf here, I used a little bit of iced spruce and then I'm adding in a little bit of uh, broken, what is it, sapphire? Something sapphire. I'll have everything linked in the description box below. But this is just gonna give me a very vibrant, but fall-ish color palette, which I actually end up turning more summery, but you know, what else? I was going for fall. The next two will be fall, I promise. <laughs> I added a little bit of seedless preserves for my flowers. And now for my banner, I'm just using what's left on my brush here and just lightly inking in this banner. This is going to leave plenty of uh, room there in the center for me to stamp my sentiment and it'll be legible. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? I love how the impressed areas grab more of the ink so they really start to show up. Now, since I did not do an inked impression on this, I just grabbed a, I think this is a jelly roll pen in glitter, uh, silver glitter. And I'm just going over everywhere there was an impression left from the plate. And now it's time to add our sentiment. So I'm using the sentiment from the Bountiful Banner stamp set. And then I'm going to ink that up with the bark ink as well and stamp that into place. I kind of liked using the brown instead of the black. I'm on a kick, you guys. I'm kind of using brown for my sentiments instead of black right now. I don't know what's wrong with me, but hey, I like it. All right, so for the next one, I've started off the uh, floor, the flowers here. I used antique linen. I wanted to do almost a white type of flower. I, I was definitely like, we're going autumn here. We're going autumnal with these colors. So um, antique linen for my flowers. Now I'm using a little peeled paint for one set of my leaves. For the other set of leaves here on this same stencil, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of frayed burlap. This one is a distress oxide. And I'm going to add that in, and then I'm going to come over that with a little bit of aged mahogany. Now, this is going to give me a warm reddish brown, which we know leaves reddish brown in the fall. They're beautiful. But I, I just wanted, I had to get away from green. I was like, you can't make all the leaves green, Dawn. <laughs> so we went with the reddish brown. Then for the other leaves, I've added in against a little bit of iced spruce, which is going to give us that bluish green. But then I decided to add that aged mahogany in with those as well. And this is going to give me a grayish purplish color. Um, it's grayish. It's, it's beautiful. I love this color palette. <laughs> added a little bit of that frayed burlap again for my flower centers. And I love this color palette. It turned out so good. So, all right, let's take a look at the fourth panel because the first two are the identical. Then we had this one, and now we're on to the fourth one. These flowers, I started off with uh, aged mahogany because I wanted to do like a purpley red flower. So I'm gonna start with the aged mahogany. I'm hitting it harder around the edges and letting it blend into nothing there in the center. Then I'm gonna take seedless preserves, and again, I'm gonna come around just the edges of this flower. So we're gonna hit right over the area we just did and blend that purple into that red, and it's gonna give us this wineish color just around the edges. So pretty. Leaves were all the same, crushed olive and uh, peeled paint. And this time I added in a little scattered straw and uh, wild honey for some of my leaves. I know, we. I told you, I was like, Dawn, you can't do all the leaves green. So now we're doing some yellowish some yellowish leaves. And I think that this, this card, I think turned out to be my favorite in the end. You'll see how it looks. 
little seedless preserves. And then again, whatever's left on that yellow blender brush I use to color in my banner. All right, so now it's time to turn all of these into cards. We've got our four panels. Let's take a look at them. So we've got one autumn option here. We've got the one we just finished. And then we've got these two that are pretty much the same. One is blind letter pressed and the other one I inked the panel. You can also see on the one on the left, I used the die from the Bountiful Banners die that cuts in between each of the elements. And on the other one, I just used the outer die and that leaves it as one solid panel here. So currently all four of these are pretty much the same design, but we're gonna make each one unique. Starting with this one. So we're gonna take that background and we're gonna make a, we're gonna split it and we're gonna create an all over background design and we're gonna pair it with a bold sentiment. So I've pulled out the Give Thanks stamp and die. I love this stamp set. It is a gorgeous font and it just absolutely beautiful. Can't say enough good things about it. So we're gonna heat emboss it. I'm gonna treat my cardstock here with the rabbit hole embossing tool. And I'm gonna use my mini Misty to stamp this out. We're gonna ink it up with Versamark ink. And I am gonna stamp this two times, I think. It was either two or three times. It's a big, big image. So I wanna make sure I got good coverage. Pour on our gold embossing powder. Make sure that we get that all over. Tap off the excess. And then I'm gonna use my heat tool to melt that. Melting embossing powder still gets me every time. Love it. But you can see how gorgeous, gorgeous that sentiment is. We're gonna use the coordinating die here to cut that out. And then I did cut an extra one just to glue behind it to make it a little bit thicker there. There is also a stencil for this Give Thanks stamp and die here. I used that to color in my little elements there. This one goes really quick. It's such small little areas, but you could also use a Copic marker or even uh, colored pencils to color that in if you wanted. Used the same colors to match my background. So now I've grabbed some light green cardstock here and made a card base. And then I've taken that background and I've actually cut it in half. Like I said, we were gonna split it. I'm gonna bring it, instead of making it one whole background panel, uh, it was a little busy uh, sitting over top of the image as a whole. So what I've done is cut it in half and I'm gonna bring it in from the top and the bottom. I'm gonna get the arrangement just right to where it kind of flows and creates that S. And the flowers are gonna be tucked into uh, areas that just kind of make sense, make it all look like one. And as always, I spent way too long uh, toiling over exactly how I wanted it to go, but this is the arrangement that I ended up with. So once I've got that figured out, all I have to do is adhere everything. I used some Honey Bee Be Creative liquid adhesive to adhere the top and bottom florals there. And then I used some of their Be Creative foam strips to adhere my sentiment. I added the foam where it would be um, attached to just the card base and then a little bit of liquid adhesive where the sentiment is gonna overlap those florals. Ultimately, I did end up adding some gems to the background. And then I also used some of the leftover pieces that I trimmed off to add to the outside. And we'll take a look at this finished card at the end. So next up, we've got this very clean and simple card. I think this one is way different than the others and I really like how it turned out. So I've got that full back panel here and then I've taken a, a little panel here and I've used the burlap 3D embossing folder and just embossed a white piece of cardstock. I'm gonna again trim this one. So we're gonna cut pieces off of it and we're going to come in from the left and the right. Before we came in from the top and the bottom, this time we're gonna do the left and the right. I love that little bit of added texture to the background because the card is so simple and we're not going to be using a ton of the uh, floral elements there. That extra uh, three-dimensional texture in the background really helps to carry this card. So I'm using some liquid adhesive, trimming off the excess, and then we're going to mat this on a white card base as well. You could honestly leave it with just the one cluster and put a larger sentiment, but I knew that I wanted just another little portion there on the lower right side, just to, you know, kind of balance it. So we're gonna adhere this in place again with some liquid adhesive and then trim off the excess on the top and the bottom. All right, so here I've got my base God, I do really, really like how this one turned out. I've got that base done, and I used the banner die in the, which one is this in? This is in the Bountiful Banners die set. Not the impression plate, but the die set. The banner in that one is just a little bit larger. 
So I've cut it twice, once from white and once from a green cardstock, and I've heat embossed the thank you sentiment in white onto the green one, and that is from the Bountiful Banner stamp set. We're gonna adhere this in place and just trim off the part that's hanging over. For the matching panel, the one that we did the inked and the inked impression with, I'm gonna use the design as intended and then just adhere it to a card base. So you can see this as, as is is a gorgeous design and it's really quick and easy to make a card. You can switch up your color palettes. But again, I really wanted to stretch this prefab design. So let's take a look at another one that goes completely different. And this is, this one is another, uh, I can't choose between this one and the simpler one is my favorite. I, I had a really hard time choosing you guys. All right, so I've taken the Sweet Stacker Ovals dies and I've cut two, two concentric sizes, one just a little bit smaller than the other, I used that same light green cardstock and then a white one. So we're gonna create a central focal point and then our panel there, we're gonna push it to the back as like pattern paper maybe. So I've grabbed the Lovely Layers Autumn Bouquet and I'm gonna use the wheat stalk and then those little flowers to create a little hand tied bouquet that's gonna serve as our focal point. So I've cut these from white and we're gonna ink blend them to match the background colors. So for the wheat, we're gonna use the scattered straw and the wild honey. I'm just gonna start off using whatever's left on my brush and I'll pull out the inks as I need them. And then for the, um, I don't know what this is. I think it's supposed to be like Queen Anne's lace or it's not quite as big as Queen Anne's lace. I'm not sure what type of flowers these are supposed to be, but it doesn't matter. We'll just color them up to match our card. So I'm gonna add green to the stems. I'm gonna add a little bit of that aged mahogany to the flowers here, and then we'll just adhere everything together. You don't have to do anything over the top when it comes to blending these, just a simple blend will do. I'm gonna adhere my panel to my card base, and we're doing this just flat to our card base because we're gonna pop up that oval with a little foam tape eventually. But first I'm gonna hand tie my little bouquet here. So I'm gonna grab my uh, flowers here and I'm gonna add just a little bit of um, twine. So I'm grabbing some jute twine. I'm gonna cut off a length, but before I tie it, I'm gonna glue my elements together. So I'm gonna take some Be Creative Liquid Adhesive here. I'm gonna put a little dot underneath these stems and I'm gonna pinch it between my fingers. That's just gonna help hold them together so that they don't slip when I go to tie them with the twine. I'm just gonna wrap that twine around and tie a simple bow. I like how this one has much more of a rustic feel to it, but it's not uh, its not overly rustic. It's almost a Victorian feel. Uh, that that ma aged mahogany mixed with the seedless preserves creates this beautiful like dusty rosy color and it looks gorgeous with that scattered straw and the wild honey mix. All right, so once I've got my little uh, bouquet hand tied here. I can adhere that in place again, a little liquid adhesive and then some foam tape. I wanted to go pretty simple for the sentiment. I didn't want it to overpower our bouquet and the heartfelt hello had a bunch of great, it has a bunch of great sentiments in it. This is one of my favorite sentiment sets. So I grabbed that, um, what did I use? With heartfelt thanks and I stamped that in the bark ink and then die cut it using the coordinating dies. I'm gonna add a little liquid adhesive to these flowers to hold them all together here at the top so that nothing gets caught, and then adhere that to the oval with liquid adhesive. And then as I mentioned, we're gonna add some foam tape to the oval and adhere that in place. Finally, I'll just add the sentiment and then this card is done. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of the cards and review them. I think that these turned out even better than I had hoped. All right, so here we go. This is the card we just finished. I added a few gems, and I remember I will have everything linked in the description box below. So if there's anything specific you're looking for, make sure to check there. I love, love, love this color palette. I'm gonna have to revisit this one again. I also love the way this one turned out. I love the muted colors. Uh, I think that that light green background sets off the white without uh, creating too much contrast. And I, I feel like this one has a modern vibe and then that hand lettering just really, really sets it off. You can see here how that ink grabbed into the blind letterpress areas and really stands out. Then we have our super clean and simple one. 
I I was surprised at how clean that design came out, especially compared to the other two. It just goes to show that even though you have one set design, it, depending on how you use it will really influence the overall style and outcome of the card. I like this one just as much as I like the others, even though it is so much simpler. And then of course, this is the design used as intended in its entirety. And again, I am floored by how different each one of these cards actually looks, even though it does use the same basic prefab design. So it just goes to show that with a little bit of ingenuity and creativity, you can really stretch a stamp set and give it a totally, totally different look. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget, as always, all the products are listed down below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.